My dear brothers and sisters, my dearest children, indeed, we are reflecting on what happened last week. The reaction to that threat have caused some panic attack to some of us. We reacted in different ways. Some of us felt afraid, worried, concerned, angry maybe. But eventually, as time went by, we were able to deal with these overwhelming feelings. But there are others within our community who, when they heard the news, they reacted in a different way. Indeed, they had similar reactions of being overwhelmed. They felt the anxiety. But along with that anxiety, they had to deal with some somatic issues. They probably have sweated. They probably are suffering from stiffness in their shoulders and necks and back. This is indeed as a result of what's called PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. The majority of those who have felt that way are people who have come from different zones and from different, from different backgrounds. Some of them have come from war zones. They have lived the trauma of being in a war. They've seen people killed in front of them. They probably have lived the experience of bombing. As a result of that, they have developed that trauma they're living in that status they're living in that issue that is called ptsd others including myself have developed this post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of what's so-called islamophobia the attack in new zealand is still vivid in my own mind what happened in Quebec is still haunt me once in a while. What I had personally to go through seeing one, one of my own brothers, one of my own colleagues in one of the biggest masjids in Toronto is also still vivid in my mind. I am still living these raw memories of walking outside the masjid to see one of my dear brothers laid on the ground with his throat slashed and the blood all over his body and he is giving up his last breath. These are real issues we're dealing with. Alhamdulillah, this is not the case with everyone in our community. But there are members of the community who are still living these issues. We try to recover from them. But unfortunately, once in a while, we're hunted, we're attacked, we're being exposed to issues that bring back alive these issues to our minds. And we wonder if there will be a time when we will be able to recover from that trauma. We wonder whether we are able to go back to normal life. Now, practically speaking, I don't want to build the fear in your hearts and minds. If you happen to be suffering from these issues, like myself, as I said again, seek professional help, as I am doing. Seek professional help because this is indeed a real issue that we need to deal with more practically in our life. If someone has diabetes, or someone has a blood pressure, or someone has a kidney failure, we would not look down at them because we know that they did not choose to go to have these diseases or to live these diseases in their life. The same is to be said with mental health issues. It's not going to make you less of a man to say, I am going through some certain issues in my life and I need to seek professional help to deal with them. It's not going to make you less of a woman if you were to say, I am going through certain issues in my life and I need to seek professional help to be able to deal with them. And we want also the officials to understand that when we as a community 
deal with these issues, we're not seeking attention. We're dealing with real traumas in our life. And when we plea out for help and support, it's as a result of what we're suffering from, as a result of being concerned about our, our own families, as a result of being concerned about our own children, whom we have brought to this part of the world, hoping they will be able to live a better life. So today, I want to bring this to the surface. If you see someone who's dealing with these issues, talk to them, convince them. There are, alhamdulillah, resources that are available within our city and that could deal with these issues. If you don't feel comfortable with going to a, a, a person who deals with this issue and uh, from general perspective, you can seek more specific cultural or faith background who can help you out to be able to deal with these issues and hopefully, inshallah, by the will of Allah, you'll get back on your feet and you'll be able to live a normal life. But I want also at the same time to help us understand one concept. We firmly believe no one would die short of life. When the time comes for you to die, this is it. If the time has come for you, you will leave regardless. No one can delay you one second, or no one can hasten and rush your time of departure by one second. That's a fact we understand. And that's part of what makes us able to understand how to live our life and to be resilient and to deal with the different challenges that are thrown into us. We firmly believe that that if we were to be in the most sophisticated, safest fortress, on earth, when the time comes for us, we will leave, regardless. So that part should make us feel ease, should bring to us comfort to a certain extent that I am not going to die short of life. I will be living my life, and when time comes for me, I will leave. And at the same time, I firmly believe that if Allah loves a servant, or if Allah loves a guru, he would test him. This is part of our test. We're here for a purpose. We're here in this life for a purpose to build a credit for our real life. And whatever we endured in this life, whatever challenges we encounter, whatever difficulties we're exposed to, if we were to look at them from the right perspective, if we were to make sense of the nonsense that is in our life, we will live in peace and tranquility. That's why I try to most of the time explain to my clients that yes, I understand. Things are difficult. There are so many challenges. I, I understand that. Are you able to change them? Most likely you're unable to change them. Well, you might as well accept and accommodate your life to be able to become resilient and grow out of your pain, grow out of your challenges to become a much stronger person. This is what, when I, what I want my, my, my younger brothers and sisters to understand. I just came from a janazah from a funeral for the 15 years old. I know it's very difficult. I was seeing the teens, all his friends going around, having the last look, you know, dropping the tears. And I was trying to explain for them, it's very painful. You know, losing someone is tragedy. But we need to accept. We need to grow out of this pain and become more successful and stronger individuals. So indeed, that's what we want. It challenges like this to do to us, to help us become much more stronger, much more resilient, and to also be learned If we were to hear news, we need not to jump to conclusions. We need to go to the ulil amr, to those who have the authority or the knowledge or the ability to interpret the actions. And allow me today to say to my brother Mustafa, I can't see him, but I know he's present here somewhere. We're very proud of you. We're very, very proud of the work that NCCM has been doing to our community to immediately jump and react and, and put us, steer us back onto, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the right position by not jumping to conclusions and take precautions before, we, uh, before the investigations are, are finished. 
And allow me today also to salute my chief. Even though I'm a volunteer, I would not be saluting him if I see him walking in the street. But I have a lot of respect for you and all my brothers and sisters in the force. For them to be here immediately and to take uh, very quick actions in helping us be evicted and investigate and find out if the place is safe or not and take the precautions of closing the streets behind. And I want also to salute my, my mayor, even though I don't live in, in Hamilton, but planning to do so. You have been a tremendous source of support for us and our community in Canada. And you are, we are blessed to have you here in, in Hamilton. And we want to know that how comfort your words were, along with my brother Matthew, who have immediately called me right on the spot. And other politicians, I might not be able to recognize their names, but this reaction of them have helped us to restore confidence and build resilience and know we are part of this beautiful mosaic of the society in which we're living in. And we pray to the God Almighty, help us to be able to live together in peace and harmony and be able to contribute for a better future to ourselves and to our children. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu, and Astain, who was Tahdi, who was Tafir, who would be Lahm Shrokusin, or say Ati Amalina. May Yahdi Hilla, Pahu al Muhtad, woman you the Felentej the Lahuari and Moshida. In the Lahu Malaikata, who you Saluna and Nabi. Ya Yuhaladina Amanu, Salu Ali, who was Salimu Taslima. Allahumma Salah Alice in the Mohammed and Alice in the Mohammed. Come a Salate Alice in the Ibrahim, Alice in the Ibrahim. Overkila Huma Alice in the Mohammed and Alice in the Mohammed and Kovak Alice in the Ibrahim of Hilal Amin and Nakahamid Majid. اللهم إن عبيدك أبناء عبيدك أبناء إمائك نواصينا يا رب بيدك ماض يا رب فينا حكمك عدل يا رب فينا قضاءك نسألك اللهم بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحد من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك بأن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا يا رب اللهم اجعله جناء لهم من وأحزاننا اللهم إن نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال ربي هب حكما وألحقني بالصالحين واجعل لي لسان صدق في الآخرين واجعلني من ورثة جنة النعيم واغفر لوالدي وارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا ولا تخزني يوم يبعثون يوم لا منفع بال ولا بنون واجعلني يا ربي ممن يأتيك بقلب سليم وقل قول هذا واستغفر الله ولكم فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين واقم الصلاة That's all. Give them speech. For the speeches. Well, that's what I'm saying. Can you tell them enough that it's all this thing? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, as you notice that I have finished the speech of the Jum'ah a little early because we do have another part uh, that we would like everyone to stay with. Now, we are still within the range of time. I know some of you have to go back to work. That's why I finished early so we can give 10 minutes for our guests to come and address us and share their um, uh, contribution uh, and, and express their support and, uh, to our community. So inshallah, please stay and be you know, uh, mindful of their presence with us. You can socialize. I know that this is a chance for us to socialize, but inshallah, we can postpone that until after 2 o'clock. We can do it outside. Jazakumullah khairan. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar.